Thank you for meeting us at The Intersection, where the worlds of energy and technology come together. Hello, and thank you for meeting us here at The Intersection. If for those listeners that are, this is your first time, welcome. For those returning listeners, welcome back. I am UTC's president and CEO, Cheryl Riggs, and I am here today for a very special recording of an in-person episode right here in Oklahoma City where we're hosting our 2022 Utilities Technology Council Telecom Technology Conference. And we are joined by two very special guests. Just to let you know, the podcast will be released on our usual podcast uh, platforms, but a video stream of this episode will also be available. So please, I hope you get a chance to, to look at that. Well, I'm joined here today with Michael Quinn, President and CEO of Sherryland uh, Utilities and Hunt Utility Services, which is headquartered in Dallas, Texas. And just, just a couple of hours from here, but also joining uh, Mr. Quinn is Mr. Paul Reed, the CEO of Memomax, which is also headquartered in Texas. However, Mr. Reed, he is coming all the way from New Zealand, uh, where he is actually, he's gonna tell you more because I know he's all <laughs> over the place. But Michael and Paul, thank you first. Let's say thank you for even joining us today. And can you please tell our listeners, our viewers, a little bit about yourself. And I want to say, I think we don't have a title for this episode, but I think we should call it the special CEO edition. <laughs> uh, so, cause you're going to get very little from me because I want you all to hear and glean from the expertise, the journeys, the experience of these two CEOs that are not new to the industry at all. So we're going to start with you. We're going to start with Paul. Okay. Yeah. Paul, you have over 25 years of experience, but before we get there, tell us a little bit about yourself that you want us to know. Yeah, so um, I am obviously from New Zealand, um, and uh, my family are domiciled in New Zealand, so we, we lived in the U.S. for a while. So what, you know, I tend to be on the road a fair bit, so I'm here in, in the U.S. at the moment, and, um, you know, I think it's been 25 years, but I started as a, you know, a, on the floor in the factory. Mm -hmm. So I started producing radio products um, on the floor in the factory and then worked my way right through the industry into computer-aided design. I was a technician, uh, moved into engineering, uh, eventually did my degree and um, led the charge in terms of technology at MIMO Max Wireless uh, around the RF design of the products. And then later, um, when we moved to the US, I took on the general manager role of the business here in the US, and from there, um, you know, it emerged into the, the CEO role on moving back to New Zealand. So it's been quite a journey with uh, a lot of different areas that I've, I've touched, but being a technical CEO, and I know Michael has an engineering background as well, um, gives you some great perspective on you know, discussions you can have at a technology level and how that might improve and drive things for both your business and your customers. So. Yes, and, and I, I also heard too, not only the technology, but just the fact that you basically grew up in the company. That's right. So you, you understand the operation side of things, that's right. and I'm sure that has been very beneficial to you. So that's good to know too, as we think about some of our listeners who, or viewers that have no experience or are still trying to figure out what journey or what path, it's good to know that you've shown that your path, you can start even right at the beginning. That's right. And go endless possibilities. So thank you for sharing that. So Michael, we know you have over, you were with Encore before you were appointed the president and CEO of Shareland and Hunt Utilities. And you have what, over 30 years of, of experience? 34 years. Wow, 34 years. very impressive. So let, let's hear about your journey and a little bit about yourself. So like Paul, um, engineer, um, unlike Paul, I'm sure he graduated with much higher GPA than I did. <laughs> and so uh, started literally as associate engineer, um, have had the benefit of working in the generation world. Mm -hmm. um, uh, in 34 years, I've had 15 different jobs in the industry. And so uh, probably the, the funniest one, a uh, quick story, uh, I was actually, asked to take over federal advocacy in Washington, D.C. And so I, I, the person who's asking me to take that role, I said, 
say this three times and if it makes sense, I'll still do it. I said, you want engineers talking to politicians. I said, I mean, what world does that make sense? And they said, no, the ability to communicate complex technical things mm -hmm. at a level, whether it's the, the, the end use customer, you know, that, that, is, that receives power from utility or, you know, politician, we still have things that we need to get done. So the ability to communicate it in a, in a layman's terms kind of kind of worked out. And so, um, yeah, 34 years, I, I absolutely love being in the industry and uh, hopefully get to stay for a while. Oh, I'm sure you will. And I would love to hear more. I actually, I, I, I'm sure others want to hear more because I also think that it makes sense too for engineers to go to speak to our federal regulators and so forth. And my thinking behind that is who can tell your story better? Hmm. You know, even from a technical or even a non-technical perspective, because I often hear from a lot of them that although they're making decisions on these very important issues that affect you, me, and everyone, mm. they're not always aware how, what they're deciding. So you mm -hmm. help uh, bring that to the table. So could you could share one story, if you don't mind, of how did that go? And, and so um, it, it went really well. Um, I remember there was a time we were, we were talking, um, <laughs> I'm not going to identify the individual, <laughs> um, but we were having a conversation and, and he was being a little bit flippant about, hey, well, you should be able to do X, Y, Z. Mm. And so I just asked that individual very calmly and rationally, I said, so tell me that there's three manufacturers that I can go to for that service mm -hmm. that I can competitively bid that has you know has a product that's going to stand up in utility space mm -hmm. and all of a sudden they kind of, kind of a you know kind of a day's look of well I, I didn't think about it from that that mm -hmm. standpoint and so um i agree the, the ability to tell our story and paul and i were having this conversation earlier sometimes we're trying to express what we want to do but sometimes we need to express what's the impact if we're not successful yeah that's I agree and I, I'm coming from someone who doesn't have the utility background as long as you gentlemen do you know in other industries that's what I have learned and my background is accounting and, and operations so I've noticed the language has to be different for different audiences and the impact is actually as people the term they use nowadays clickbait hmm. that's the clickbait to get hmm. them to really pay attention and then we can go deeper and deeper and deeper. So since Paul, I have to hear from too, because it just, as, as Michael was talking, and I'm going off script a little bit. That's okay. But I'm thinking about New Zealand, and uh, because ironically, even though I've only been in this role for two years, I've already seen Paul at several events <laughs> all the way from New Zealand. So how does that also help you as far as in your leadership role with trying to identify and tell the story and also make key decisions. Mm. You know, how does that help you? Yeah, I think it's, uh, well, the, the business sells into multiple countries around the world. Mm. So we have an insight into what's happening in New Zealand and Australia. We have an insight into what's happening into the UK. And we have an insight into what's happening in, in North America. So, you know, having that insight, you kind of, in some respects, you see the future. Yes. So, you know, when I look at spectrum issues for, as an example, yes. and I look at what's happening with New Zealand and Australia and the UK, if you wanted to purchase spectrum today, you wouldn't be able to do that. Mm -hmm. Here in the US, there seems to be, you know, a number of options. Mm -hmm. And the thing is that um, when that goes away, then, you know, there won't be options. So I guess a lot of what I do is sort of share that knowledge share that perspective when I, when I visit the US yeah. and say, well, you know, if you want to secure your spectral future, <laughs> now is probably the time to start to think about that. So, exactly. you know, you can bring this global, global you know, vision yeah. into, into this market and it helps us to sort of, um, yeah, kind of look to see what's happened over time in different, different regions. So it's, it's very powerful to, to have that perspective. I like yeah. that. I guess I would say, so you get to look into the future because of your international That's right. background. Mike, you get to shape the future <laughs> because you're telling the story, both of you are telling the story, but to an audience that would not know, but it's critical for mm. them to make decisions. So yeah. this is a, making a huge impact. So 
that's just one way. As we think about your time, or as you think about your time in this industry, and you have quite a bit, which is good, you have many reflections, what has been the biggest takeaway? And what would you tell someone who was just getting started in this industry? I'm gonna start with, with either one of you, just jump in, okay. back and forth. Okay, yeah. uh, I'll, I'll jump first. Um, right now, the industry is going through a huge transition. Mm -hmm. uh, and as part of that, to me, there's no defined paths. And so for some people that might be a little bit overwhelming, but for those who are, have a little bit of risk appetite, you're not confined to one thing or another. I mean, I, I talked about being, you know, in an industry for 34 years, but 15 different roles. And so it's really how you define success mm -hmm. and where you want to participate in, in uh, I'll say, make an impact. And so um, our industry is one where if you can demonstrate that you can provide value and, and perform at a high level, man, th there's, there's endless opportunities. And right now, quite honestly, it is in, you know, if you're an employee looking for opportunities, it's an awesome marketplace. And so mm -hmm. someone who's coming in, don't think about it as, hey, been there, done that. It's just a utility kind of thing. Mm -hmm. No, you haven't been there, done that. <laughs> we're, we're working on energy right. storage. We're doing mm -hmm. things in the communication yes. space that we haven't ever. Mm -hmm. We're processing data at, you know, at, at volumes and reams of data at levels we haven't before. And so it's definitely different than, you know, a perception of someone who started this industry 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. And part of that is we have to tell our story differently as well. Um, people are absolutely interested in what happens in our industry, especially when, you know, whether it's weather or, or just, you know, hurricanes or, or some type of event. I mean, you, you saw as a result of, of some of these weather events, you just saw basic human services just get degraded, right? And, and what we take as, you know, every day doesn't occur without us performing at a high level. What's been some of the, the, the biggest um, takeaways for you and what would you tell someone just getting started in the industry? Yeah, I think um, for me, you know, when I started, I started in the electronics industry, you can get into mechanical engineering, you can get into electrical engineering, you can get into RF engineering. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was fortunate that I was in a company that gave me those opportunities. And in the end, I really enjoyed the customer engagement and engagement with utilities and working with like-minded people, professionals that were passionate about what they do, you know, acknowledging the criticalness of what they're building and, you know, the impact that has on, has on lives mm -hmm. and people and, you know, the planet. And you just never know where exactly you're gonna, you're gonna end up in the world. You gotta start somewhere and that's yeah. great. Some uh, great advice to tell anyone, both of you, what you said. You've got to be open. Yeah. And I wish, uh, as you were talking, and, and Michael, when you were talking as well, I'm thinking about my own life, which has very twisted turns. You don't imagine, even if you do imagine, it still may not go the way you imagined it. Yeah. And that's the fun part, okay? But as we're coming up and getting, got, receiving guidance, um, and I'm thinking about in school, you know, you had those career days, especially in elementary, um, or a guidance counselor, it would be really, wonderful when we talk about raising awareness even at all levels if that doesn't stop at elementary school let's keep going and let's hear from people like yourselves to talk to students because i think that's the best way to communicate some of these stories because like you said there's so many paths um as for me like i said my, my daughter is in school for nursing and i was talking with the ceo uh, about their utility and they have nurses at their utility I was like, I didn't know that. But now I can share with her and she can share with other students, there's another opportunity, another, we don't have to just, you know, although that's good and honorable to work in a hospital, but it's not your only option. Yeah. And still have, be, have impact. Utilities have people in finance, HR. There's so many opportunities to be a part of this great industry. And, and actually that is very key too because people want to be a part. You know, once they find out the great work that's being done, as you, as you just said, we can't do anything 
We can't have this, we couldn't have this meeting right now, this episode without <laughs> electricity. So people want to be a part of that. So I think we need to continue to encourage, but I really, you know, the story of what you said, both of you, 15 jobs, you don't know where it's going to land. You don't know where. Um, you started there at the beginning and you, you didn't know. So hopefully our listeners today, because this was a special episode, not just because we have two great CEOs here in person, but it's a special episode because of you sharing your journey. And hopefully listeners that are new, viewers that are new, they'll, they'll take it to the next step and try to research and find out more about this industry and where they can fit in on this journey, because they're definitely welcome. Before we, we just close out, like I said, I want you both to have the last say as we talk about it. And you know, this is our conference. Neither one of you are new to UTC. Um, so I wanna, I wanna hear your closing thoughts to share with the, the viewers, the listeners, but also just give me a, maybe one favorite moment at the conference that you might wanna share. For me, um, I, I haven't, um, because I've switched roles here in the last, switched companies as well as roles in the last three years. Um, for me, it's an opportunity to reconnect with some folks. Um, had dinner with some great folks last night. I uh, got introduced to somebody in the industry I had not met, right? And so it's a great networking forum. And so very much, very much appreciate that about it. Awesome, awesome. And do you want to share any last comments for the viewers or listeners? It, words of wisdom? Well, I don't know about words of wisdom. <laughs> um, I, I guess what I would leave folks with is there's a lot of opportunity in our industry. Um, we're a maturing uh, workforce, and so that just tells me there's waves and waves of opportunity, whether you want to stay at that, that technology level or if you want to try and progress your career you know, into management or, or, or senior management. Um, and, and if you look at companies today, they, the faces of the folks, the genders of folks in different roles are different than they were 30 years ago. And so there's opportunity. People just have to be willing to step up and say, I'd like that opportunity. That is good advice, good, good closing. Paul, please. Yeah, well, you know, similar to Michael, it's been, you know, UTC is such a great conduit for sharing. Everyone's collaborative, inclusive, welcoming. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it's been, been fantastic. Uh, so really great to catch up with people I haven't seen for a couple of years, um, have face-to-face -face conversations, and it's, it's different than having a, a Teams meeting or a virtual virtual event, right? So, so that's been been really great, and most I've spoken to have, have echoed that, and uh, it's 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 been really good. In terms of, of parting comments, look, you know, Mama Max has been involved with UTC for some time, um, and we recognise the value it brings. And again, being being a, a vendor, I get to see a lot of utilities, and maybe some of those are. UTC members and some of them aren't. And when you look at across, across the landscape of the US um, you know, energy sector, there's around about somewhere between two and 3,000 utilities, right? So between IOUs, um, you've got your public power districts, munis, co-ops, you, know, you name it. Um, it's a largely fragmented space, depending on um, state, legislation, local, you know, uh, but what I do tend to see as a, as a takeaway and perhaps a parting comment is that those utilities that are engaged here at this conference, while the market is fragmented, their thinking is consolidated, right? So they know that, hey, we're going to get off our, um, our old um, serial comms, we're going to move to MPLS. Uh, we're going to have a look at advanced uh, metering infrastructure. Uh, we're going to look at, see what's new in teleprotection. And they're all singing from the same songbook. And that's the, the, one of the key things I see for, from the groups of utilities that are engaged here at UTC, is that they are up to date with the latest. You know, and that's, um, that's one of the big takeaways for me. I want to thank you both for your participation and the intersection. You've definitely given us great insight and shared with us about your journeys. And I'm sure it's going to impact not just myself, but our listeners, our viewers, to actually think about this career path and the, the important work that is being done. So, you know, to your point, uh, Michael, about 
that the opportunities are endless, you couldn't have said it better. And I, I think sometimes people don't even get that story. So thank you for making sure that that story got out. And as well as the message you gave, Paul, about the networking, that UTC is playing a role and we're very honored to be a part of that where you get to see your colleagues and, and actually friends, you know, but we know it goes far beyond our meeting, which is another actual, another value of this industry because a lot of people, once they leave their job, they, they go their separate ways, but you all still continue, I've noticed it, to have these relationships, not just to have fun, which we love having fun, but to actually make an impact and coming up with solutions and share those solutions. So I wanna thank you both again sincerely for participating on the intersection and allowing and or letting people know that you can be anywhere on this path and you can come together at the intersection. So thank you so much to our two great CEOs and their perspective, great perspective. Thank you and enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you for meeting us at the intersection. For more information about the Utilities Technology Council, visit utc.org.